Hello and welcome to St. David's Church here in Ton Revel. If you haven't already guessed, today is Palm Sunday. So what worship song could we have to start us off today but Hosanna in the highest. When they neared Jerusalem, having arrived at Bethphage on Mount Olives, Jesus sent two disciples with these instructions. Go over to the village across from you. You'll find a donkey tethered there, her colt with her. Untie her and bring them to me. If anyone asks what you're doing, say the master needs them. He will send them with you. This is the full story of what was sketched earlier by the prophet. Tell Zion's daughter, look, your king's on his way, poised and ready, mounted on a donkey, on a colt, foal of a pack animal. The disciples went and did exactly what Jesus told them to do. They led the donkey and colt out, laid some of their clothes on them, and Jesus mounted. Nearly all the people in the crowd threw their garments down on the road, giving him a royal welcome. Others cut branches from the trees and threw them down as a welcome mat. Crowds went ahead and crowds followed, all of them calling out, Hosanna to David's son. Blessed is he who comes in God's name. Hosanna in the highest heaven. As he made his entrance into Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken. Unnerved, people were asking, what's going on here? Who is this? The parade crowd answered, this is the prophet Jesus, the one from Nazareth in Galilee. Thanks, Maureen. Here we are entering Holy Week. For me, this one week of the year is the most precious 
and yet the most troubling of all the church year. We've journeyed together for the last five weeks, reflecting on what Lent means to us. Then suddenly we're here. It's Palm Sunday. We have our blessed souvenir palm and everything's wonderful. And if that is what some people need to jump from palm waving today to Easter eggs in a week's time, that's fine. But they miss so much. Yes, there's pain in the coming week, but there is also the opportunity, opportunity to walk alongside Jesus and experience the true meaning of Lent and Easter. Let's think about the crowds that day. They weren't that different from us. They had hopes and dreams just the same as us. We have dreams of freedom and happiness. So did they. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil. Who is this? Is this the king that's come to save us from the Romans? You see, to the ordinary person in that street, that's what they wanted, freedom. So they waved their palms and shouted, Hosanna. Jesus didn't need that. It was really for the crowd's benefit. We wave our palms today and in lots of ways it's good to be reminded of that procession into Jerusalem when their king and ours rode a donkey. At that very moment even rocks and stones shattered. This was the Jesus moment. So powerful that even the land itself shook. Little did the crowds that day know but it wasn't to be the only shock of the next few days. Holy Week was going to be one shock wave after another. The triumph for Palm Sunday is not the donkey, the hosannas, or the palms. It is Christ's earth-shaking entry into our world and our lives. It is a triumph that will show itself over and over again throughout this week. It is a triumph that happens wherever and whenever Jesus is present. But you know, we have an advantage over the crowds that day. We don't have to wave a palm or shout Hosanna. We just have to say, hello Jesus, and welcome him in. When we allow Jesus into our life, Nothing is ever the same again. He can change our life so much that we feel life in a new and more intense way. Which leads us on to our next worship song, which is called, To Live is Christ. If I rise, let me rise on you. Not on all of my successes, my esteem or my pursuits If I lose Let me lose my life Cause if I belong to Jesus The flesh is crucified For me to live is Christ For me to live is Christ For me to live is Christ To die is gain If I grow, let me grow in you. Will the seeds of wanting more rip and pride out by the roots? And if I'm still, let me hear you speak. Not the tone of my transgressions, but the song of the redeemed. For me. For me
collect for today. True and humble King, hailed by the crowd as Messiah, grant us the faith to know you and love you, that we may be found beside you on the way of the cross, which is the path of glory. Amen. Amongst all the feelings of joy and trepidation as we enter this holy week, let's bring before God all that brings us happiness and sorrow all the times when we have let ourselves and him down, through the words of the confession. Almighty and merciful God, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with all our heart, and we have not loved others as Christ loves us. We are truly sorry. In your mercy, forgive us. Help us to amend our lives, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. May God our Father, who by our Lord Jesus Christ has reconciled the world to himself and forgives the sins of all who truly repent, pardon and deliver us from all our sins and grant us the grace and power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Remember that first earth-shaking Palm Sunday as we delight with wonder and declare what we believe through the words of the baptismal creed. I believe, I believe and trust, trust in God, God the Father, Father who created all that is. is. I, I believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed mankind. I believe and trust in his Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God. I believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace be with you and keep you in the love of Christ. Father of glory, holy and eternal, look upon us now in power and mercy. May your strength overcome our weakness, your radiance transform our blindness, and your spirit draw us to that love, shown and offered to us by your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our next worship song is called Heal Our Land. You take our lives flawed yet beautiful restore refine Lord you're merciful redeem revive
We offer our prayers to God in the name of Jesus Christ and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. God, whose Son Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem on the first Palm Sunday, we pray for this city, for those who live here in comfort or in need, for those who study, work or serve here, for those who come as visitors for interest or for leisure, for those whose decisions and example shape our common life. We pray that our own community and all its people may recognize in Jesus the one who comes in the name of God and may find in Jesus the bringer of truth and liberation. God, whose Son Jesus Christ subverted the expectations of the crowd, we pray for our society and our world for those who are intrigued or baffled by Jesus, for those who are challenged or angered by the gospel, for those who cannot see Jesus or hear the gospel because the church gets in the way, for all who are seeking to follow the way of discipleship. We pray that the disturbing story of Jesus may continue to find its way into hearts and minds and so renew lives and transform communities. God, whose Son Jesus Christ humbled himself even to death on the cross, we pray for all in pain or distress, for those who suffer because of the inhumanity of others, for those who are sick or frail or depressed, for the dying and the bereaved. We pray for strength and encouragement for wholeness and for justice, for comfort and for hope. God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, is exalted and given the name above every name, we pray for the coming of your kingdom in the lives of your people, in the worship and witness of your church, in and for the whole of your creation. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Let it be so. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Jeff. Here I am, palm cross in hand, ready for the week ahead. But am I really? Am I ready to join the party with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus? Watch the precious perfume poured out and over Jesus, and then so lovingly dried by Mary. I understand why Mary would give so much to thank you to Jesus for the life of her brother. I even recognise Judas and his love of money. But that doesn't stop me from wishing. I could have been there, in that house, for just a few moments, dining with friends. Oh yes, and of course Jesus. But then there was the shocking washing of feet. Can you imagine this king preparing himself to do the most dirty job in any household at that time? Washing the feet of travellers with all the smells and the filth that would have been present. But he did it, yes, out of love. But more than that, to teach his disciples, his friends, that he wanted them to serve. He was showing them that no job is too low, not even for the Son of God. The next scene is quite different. Everyone is sat around having supper. Jesus breaks the bread and says, this is my body. He lifts the cup of wine and tells them, this is my blood. Do you think they understood? I somehow doubt it. Jesus knew that evening who would betray him 
and who would deny him? How strong is that? To understand what would happen that night and the next day and yet still love them there at that moment and also all the generations to come down through the ages to us. When they moved on after supper to a place they felt was safe for them all to rest, all Jesus asked of them is to stay awake while he prays. But they failed to do that. How alone our Lord must have been. Here he was, knowing what was to come, filled with the love for his friends. But even a simple request, a very small ask, and they couldn't do it. Maybe if they'd been awake, the shock of the guards entering their camp wouldn't have been so severe. Who knows? What an earth-shaking few days it was, and what a painfully wonderful week it is for us, accumulating our our Lord's resurrection on Sunday. Just like Jesus' friends, we need to live through and learn from those last few days of Jesus' life. And to think it started with a palm. Why a palm? People say palm leaves grew at the side of the road into Jerusalem, so it was easy to cut down and line the road with. But that seems incredibly sensible. And maybe, just maybe, it's a reminder that we are held in the palm of God's hand, forever safe and secure. All our on-site services are at the usual time. If you'd like to share some time with us on Good Friday, you can join us for a short service here on YouTube from 10am. It'd be wonderful if you could join us then and on Easter Day. We'd like to say a big thank you to Maureen and Jeff for their help in today's service. And of course, to you for joining us. Let's say the grace together. May, May the, grace the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ and, and the, the love, love of God, God and, and the, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be with, with us all evermore. evermore. Amen. The crowds that cheered their long-awaited King and hoped and prayed for freedom, sadly for many all over the world, they still hope and pray for freedom. So for our last worship song today, we acknowledge that longing to be free of anything that holds us prisoner, be it actual incarceration or addiction. So here is the Wren Collective with Sing It From The Shackles. Peace be with you. You're all in our prayers. Goodbye. Goodbye. See you from the shackles. See you from the chains. See you from the trenches. See you through the pain. Shackles. We're gonna sing it loud Praises 
from these ashes We'll see victory Chains are worth